bet you if you had some water in them tires, it'd climb. Hey everybody, Colt here. Today we're going to go over putting a tire ballast in your rock crawler tires. Things to consider, what fluid to use, and how it's going to work for you. So stay tuned. So the first thing you think of when you think of tire ballast, most people think of agricultural equipment, tractors, anything of that nature. And the reality is, is that's where it came from. I mean, they've been doing that for years. As far back as I could find, I was trying to find the first person to put a tire ballast in their tires. And honestly, I can't find it. You know, old farmers have probably been doing it long before they had any type of record keeping anyway. Basically, since they could put tires or put fluid in tires, they've been doing it. Whether it means putting weights on the wheels or running calcium chloride or in today's standard running stuff that's a little easier on the wheels that doesn't rot them out. I've ran tire ballast in the last three rock crawlers I've had. You need to ask yourself, is it worth putting that weight in my tires, that unsprung weight, to gain traction? Like I said before, Farmers have been doing it for forever. I mean, they run it and they gain traction. And anybody that's grown up on a farm, lived on a farm, and driven a tractor that doesn't have fluid in the tires, and then one that does, or has done that, or added weights to it, they see a drastic difference. And you do gain traction and more stability. And that's what I've seen in my rock crawlers. A uh, little fun fact, actually the first time I ever heard about fluid in tires, wasn't from tractors, but is actually my dad and his friends running it in their ice racing Jeeps. In my backdrop, I've had some people ask me about, and what it is, is it's just a handful of his old dash plaques I found one day from when he was ice racing and off-road racing. So this is my dad. He's the one that taught me so much about off-roading and being, you know, thinking outside the box. Funny story, he was in the Air Force for 36 years, I believe. Back in the 70s, he was making alloy tie rods out of, out of airplane parts. <laughs> so, I was, you know, he's just always thinking of stuff way, way ahead of its time. That's where I first heard about fluid and tires. They would run actual antifreeze in their tires to help them gain traction. I don't think you can do that anymore. First thing you need to ask yourself, though, is do... I drive it on the road. If this thing sees regular road miles, the odds are you probably don't want to put any fluid in your tires. The second thing you need to ask yourself is, do I have the components to handle fluid in my tires? All, all the vehicles that I've put it in, I've had one ton axles with alloy axle shafts. I don't have big motors. I don't normally run big motors, but a lot of guys do run big motors and still run that fluid in their front tires. I've heard of people running fluid in their front and rear tires, but I've gained enough stability with just the front. The third thing you need to ask yourself is what kind of fluid you're going to run in your tires. If this is something you know you have the good parts, you know you're not seeing a lot of street miles, you know it's just specifically for rock crawling, and there's a few options out there. Old tractors, old equipment, they used to run calcium chloride. Some of them still have it in there today. The problem with calcium chloride is that it does have a low level of acidity and it actually wears into the wheels and that's why you see tractor wheels rot from the inside out. It is also a salt that comes from limestone and it's really water soluble. When you mix it in with water you are creating a antifreeze of sorts that won't freeze at low temperatures and it weighs about 11 and a half pounds per gallon. So it's quite a bit heavier than water. Water weighing eight, just a little over eight pounds, 8.34 pounds per gallon. They do have an alternative called uh, Rimguard or some of the other ones that they make now for tractor companies or for guys that run fluid in their tires that weighs about 
10 and a half to 11 pounds per gallon. But if you're gonna run a fluid, you need to know how much it weighs to know how much weight you're actually putting in each tire. I've even heard of farmers running beet juice or RV antifreeze before to weigh down their tires and create that tire ballast. So for me, I'm gonna run water. A lot of people run RV antifreeze if they're running their tires in the winter, but the reality is where I live, my tires don't really do that well in the cold and snow anyway, so I change them out with others. And that's kind of the case with most sticky compound tires. But the tires I run, I'm gonna use water and I'm only gonna fill it up to half the hub. A lot of guys will run their fluid to the top of the rim. I run mine half full. The reason for that is when you get out on the east coast, sometimes you have to have a lot more tire spin. And with that tire spin, when your tire is completely full of water, um, you kind of brick wall into that rock as opposed to bouncing over it. And on the west side of the country, when you have a full tire, you gain just ridiculous traction in the front end and it'll help pull you over rocks. I like to run mine half because I'll wheel anywhere in the country and when you have a half full or a half full tire and you have to use that tire spin and get that momentum, that fluid kind of works its way around the edges and I can still bounce up the rocks when I need to and it's not so hard on my drivetrain parts. Also, when I'm on the west side of the country four-wheeling, I can still have that low ballast weight that gives me the traction that I want. The other things that's worked in my advantage of running half full as opposed to completely rim full is a situation like this where I drive up and I get bellied out. And when I'm bellied out, I can actually, I'll start running the tires and the tires, the front tires will spin and that water will start doing one of these numbers and it'll actually launch me up over the rock and then I can continue on four wheeling. It's really worked in my advantage. Like I said, I've used it before. I really am a true believer in having a tire ballast of some kind in your dedicated rock crawler. And with more people and more people towing their rigs around that don't see the street, this may be an option for you. So I'm going to show you how to do this with a $12 part from Tractor Supply and a valve core puller that you can get from any auto parts or hardware store. I'm not where I'm supposed to be I'm going in circles, going in circles I should get away from here There's a better place for me, better place for me Trying to play my symphony got the tire jacked up. I got the valve stem where I want it. I want to fill the water to half hub so I don't want it any higher or lower than where I want my water level to be. The easiest way to do this when you go to fill these is to pull that valve core. You'll get the most water in at one time. So we'll pull the valve core and we'll hook up our nice little cheap tractor supply water filler and we'll start filling water. Noise around, constantly fighting for space. I need to clear my mind, need to clear my mind. I wanna be empty, be empty. Be empty. A sparkle lights on fire. I'm high, I'm a butterfly. filling air will build up in the tire but you have to turn the water off otherwise it's just going to spray water and you can just push that button down and let that build up of air out i think you can hear it and when you got enough air out you can just stop and go back to filling so at this point you can tell i'm getting close i don't know if you can hear it 
I'll try to put the mic up. We can hear it bubbling, so I know that it's getting kind of close to that level that I want. If you were to want it at the top of your wheel, then you'd want your valve stem up here. Perfect. So now I can put the valve core back in and if I need to put any air in I can just need to roll the valve stem up higher so that I can uh, get air without having a watery mess. And it's good to remember that uh, later on if you ever need to put air in or take air out you're going to have to have your valve stem at the upper half of your wheel. Just a matter of repeating the same steps to the other side. So it looks like we're there, squirting water at us. Uh, it took me about 15 minutes per side with a 39 inch tire on a 17 inch wheel going half hub. So that can uh, obviously vary depending on your water pressure and everything else too, but I would think, but it's still always gonna be going through the same size valve stem. tell I'm gonna have to put a little air in the tires with as low as they're sitting so we'll back up over to the garage and air them up so check this out I rolled in to air up the tires got this valve stem above the hub and got lucky enough that this one is too so how about that <laughs> Up. The reason I want it up top is if I have too much air, 
I can let the air out. If I have it below here, it's gonna shoot water out instead of air. So to kind of get an idea of how much weight you're putting in, this is a one gallon jug of RV antifreeze. And it just happens to be about the exact width of my tire and even about the width this way. So if I were to go half hub and work it around the tire, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's about seven gallons worth of water that I put in this tire, which would equivalent to about 58 pounds. 60 pounds you just average up. So I've put about 60 pounds in each tire on each side. The one thing you need to remember though, is whatever fluid you put in your tire, whether it be water or RV antifreeze or calcium or anything else, you need to make sure that it's definitely biodegradable and environmentally friendly you don't want to just put regular car antifreeze in or anything else that may potentially hurt the environment because if you were to slash a hole in your tire, everything's going to leak out. 